Hey guys, it's Bennett. I'm back with some vintage, all vintage this time. Um, I've been getting some questions from some folks I know and some comments online asking me about um, vintage cards and asking me specifically about T206s. So I thought I'd hop on and do a little, um, I don't know, a little informative video about the T206 set, what it is, what it was meant to be, um, how it exists today and why collectors like myself are frankly so obsessed with collecting it. So, um, you know, what was great for me is I know a lot about this set to begin with, but a lot of the questions I was getting, I realized that as they asked me the question, I didn't necessarily know the answer and it forced me to go look some stuff up and I, and I really learned some pretty interesting things. So I'm gonna go over sort of um, the ins and outs of the T206 set, what it is, um, while showing you some of my cards from that set and some of my favorites, ending with um, one of the one of my favorite uh, cards uh, in my collection. So um, I just wanted to start with this, and I guess, like I said, some of these things are going to be common knowledge things. Some of these things are going to be new to you. Some of you may know all of this, and if you do, more power to you. Um, so let's jump into it. T two hundred six is for those that you don't know. Um, were produced between 1909 and 1911, so they were produced for three years. Uh, they were produced by a company called the American Tobacco Company, or ATC, to promote their 15 brands of tobacco. Uh, the 15 brands, um, and I do have this written down, this isn't in my head, I'm not a freak like that, um, were American Beauty, Broadleaf, Carolina Brights, Drum, Cycle, El Principal de Gales, Polar Bear, Hindu, Lennox, Old Mills, Sovereign, Tolstoy, Uzit, Piedmont, and Sweet Corporal. Piedmont and Sweet Corporal were the two most common, and that's what you'll see as the most common backs on cards. When you see T206s, they'll almost, well, not almost always, but they'll very regularly have either Piedmont or Sweet Corporal backs. I think all of the cards here, maybe with the exception of one or two, have those backs. So as we take a look at them, you'll see them over and over again. Um, it's referred to as a white border set for obvious reasons. It's also referred to as the monster because even though the set is widely um, considered to have 524 cards in it, and that number is sometimes up for debate, the different backs appear for almost all of the cards, meaning that the true number of cards, if you wanted to collect the entire set, is in the thousands. And these are not cheap. Even commons, which are which can be readily found, go for fifteen to twenty-five bucks a piece, even in poor condition. So you can imagine putting this entire set together <laughs> is an undertaking, to say the very least. Um, the name T two hundred six, and I had to look this up. The name T two hundred six, and I'll switch to another card that spiels Becker. The name T two hundred six comes from um, the American Card Catalog which was produced in 1939 by Jefferson Burdick. The T stands for 20th century, and, T and 206 was just randomly assigned to this set of cards. So there is no real meaning behind T206 other than the fact that it comes from arguably the first ever price guide, I guess you could call it, but one of the most historically significant um, publications in our hobby's history the American Card Catalog in 1939. Um, we'll look at some more of these cards as we go through. The, um, the set compri was comprised of both major leaguers and minor leaguers. There are roughly 75 Hall of Famers in this set. Um, the most cards in the set, um, team with the most cards represented is the New York Giants, who have, um, I think it's 50 cards in this set. And Hal Chase, with five, has the most variations. You'll see, as I go through these, you'll see some variations of folks batting. You'll see some of them, as we go to the next one, you'll see some of them throwing. You'll also see, see, see some of them fielding, like this Mickey Doolin. The most um, valuable ones, the most sought after ones are the portraits, and we'll get to some of those in a little bit. And there were green and red portraits, but the portraits seem to be the most sought after and the most scarce. Um, here we have Rube Ordling batting. 
Um, you'll see I have a mix of SGC and PSA. I don't have any Beckett's, although between the three companies, I think it's 300,000 of these cards have been graded between SGC, PSA, and Beckett. Um, what else can I tell you about this set that's interesting? Oh, even though, and you'll see here's Addy Joss pitching. Here's a sweet corporal back, so that's different from the Piedmonts you've seen up to this point. Even though there are only 15 backs, there were variations of the backs themselves, meaning that there are up to 40 variations of any individual card. So imagine that. Any individual player could have up to 40 different variations, and there are roughly 524 cards in the set. So good luck putting this together. Now, everybody knows that this set is home to the Honus Wagner, right? Probably the most famous baseball card ever produced, maybe the famous, most famous sports card ever produced. There are also some short prints like the Wagner, um, not of as well-known of players, but there are other short prints like the Doyle, the Plank, there's a Magiera, the O'Hara. When putting together a master set, oftentimes those cards are left out when people say, I'm going to complete a master set of, of the T206, just because in order to include them, you're talking about adding millions, possibly tens of millions of dollars to the cost of completing the task. But outside of those four or five short prints, then you get into players like Cy Young, and you can see this is in very poor condition, but it's still Cy Young. <laughs> it's got a one. You get into players like, this is a little bit older, graded card from SGC. There's the train, the big train, Walter Johnson. Oh, excuse me. Also the sweet corporal back. Then you have Christy Mathewson. In a three and a half. I really like this card. And then we get to probably the scarcest and the rarest card after the short prints. And those are the Ty Cobb cards in particular the green portrait, Ty Cobb. So this card in this condition is pretty hard to come by. And it would widely be considered the most desirable T206 after those short prints I just mentioned. And I'm really, really happy to have it in my collection. There are some other really cool, interesting sort of um, facts about this set. Um, I don't want to go on too long and drone on and on and on about it, but I would encourage you that if you are interested in vintage cards and vintage baseball, and in this set in particular, there are some great resources out there that you can look up where you can find some really, really good um, facts about the set and some really good information. Just bear in mind as you read these things that there are sort of, there are numbers thrown out there and... Um, a lot of them are accurate, but a lot of them are guesses, too, because these cards were produced, um, you know, 110 years ago. And um, how many still exist? How many were produced? They're largely guesses. They're educated guesses, but they're still guesses. So anyway, guys, thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoyed taking a look at these cards. They're beautiful. I love having them. I'll take them out from time to time. I'll sit with my son and we'll go through them. And he asks me questions about these guys. And I love answering them. And that's it. That's all I got for you today. Until next time. Bye-bye.